Hello there, today I want to show you the basics of Grasshopper, the plugin for Rhino. So, uh, Grasshopper is a plugin for Rhino that you can install in, in about like any Gra uh, Rhino software and it's very convenient in certain things. The problem is that Grasshopper is a very, let's say, difficult program to use because it has some subjects of informatics and some very complicated uh, IT related commands. That's why it's first it's it's first it's very hard to grasp, but in the end it would be very beneficial for your general projects and for and it can also help you with designing stuff that you normally cannot. So for example uh, in our um, test here, for example, we want to. I will just draw it in Rhino at first. Like I wanna, we wanna have a line that, um, de depending on the rectangles that we have, has a different extruding level. For example, we say that this block here is a very near to the thing and if the block will be a little bit further away it will be higher and this block will be very maybe even smaller than that like this and this block will be like this and what we want that all this all those different blocks will just go will be extruded by themselves we don't have to do anything and in case we want to change the curve to a different position like this, this block should be has to be resized and we want this to be automatically done. So um, there are a few things that you can do with Grasshopper that makes you easier, uh, makes your workload easier. For example, if you have a line like this one and you want to get this line into the plugin like as a source of things. So I would use a basic geometry thing that you also can find here in geometry. And you can use this one or otherwise do double click and type in geometry. So okay, I'll delete those ones with delete. And now what I can do is um, right click this button here set and then say set one geometry and use this curve so now this curve is inside of grasshopper well the thing is also that um, every time you have a thing you can always see what's basically the reference thing for example here we have the reference planar curve so we know it's a planar so it means it's just in one plane and it's a curve that means it's like round or um, a combination of lines normally I think made into like an arc shaped curve with control points in between so I will delete our um, little blocks here so what I wanted now is to make a grid that sits on top of this curve and then I want each grid to have a middle point that has a relation to the curve itself. So for example in Rhino it would be like okay this point here this point here and now I type in distance between this point and that point and here in the top it tells me the distance in this case almost 30 millimeters I would do the same for this point and maybe this point um, well I didn't draw the point but it also says the millimeters between this point and this point it shows me also like 30 millimeters this point and this point shows me 17 millimeters and then according to this I do this Okay, this has to be 17 high now, this has to be about like 28, uh, this one has to be, I don't know, what's the word, 27, 
and I have to draw them all by myself but now I want to have it that it's like made without any hassle so in order for that we grab another geometry plane or you can also use uh, you can in this case you can use a curve or a geometry thing because uh, the geometry is just is like a basic it's uh, t would take everything that you can offer but this one only relates to curves so in this one we just say the right click again but then this time set multiple curves and I will just select the curves that we made the rectangles that we made earlier and now you see again when I click on it it has like this green size shape and it tells me the items that we have here so this was this one is the line you see this and those ones those ones are uh, the rectangles so now we want to have the center and in order to that we need for example we can use uh, when we go up in curve and analysis we can use polygon center that gives us the center of the polygon uh, or we can use um, actually I don't know where it, is, where it is but it's called area and you can always use this one as well if you wanna see where an item is you can always um, click on like control alt and then you see this little information button and you can just see where the thing is at in this case that surface and an analysis and you can just see here if it's there and maybe there are some other components that you can use that might like help you around as well as one thing that as I think is very useful in the beginning is to have um, here on top there is a function on uh, display and you can select draw icons and draw full names and those things help you to make better decisions because with here you cannot see so much and if you go under display draw icons and draw full names you have a better idea of what the thing basically wants from you okay so now we would have the we want to have the area or the center I mean the center of each of those cubes and as you see, as I dragged it in into um, the polygon center, I see that there are now four points showing up. If I drag this thing now into my panel that we had in the beginning, the yellow one here, we can see the points that it has generated. Now, what I want is to have those points having a relationship to the curve that we have here in this case it is the curve closest points mm -hmm. this here under uh, curve analysis and there you have it under well it's up here anyway in this case you want the points to know where the closest point of the curve is. Yeah, no, wait, now I did it wrong. Now I pressed the rectangles, but we want did we don't want the rectangles, but we want the curve. So now you see that each of the points that we had used in the in the polygon center, we basically made each of those points having a relationship with the curve that's in the middle this one here and it gives us a few uh, outputs for example well obviously where the point is that's like the, this first output here it shows us shows us the the location of the exact points then the parameter the parameter shows us on which distance the point is located like the first like we will put in this here then we see that um, the 
The first point is here in the beginning. The second point is there. The th third point is at 15. And the thing is, you see, it doesn't in it doesn't really make sense why it's in opposite order. But this is depending on how I put in the curves in the beginning. For example, I said that uh, this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one, this is the fourth one. Thus, it thinks that this point is the first point to reference, or whoever it is. So, for example, if I now um, set the curves another time, and for example, put this one first, that one the second, this one the third, that one the fourth, you will see that the point furthest away from the curve, it begins here, is the, uh, the longest parameter on the curve. So it's like almost 70. And it also shows us uh, the distance of the each point that was pulled to the curve. So with this distance now, we can easily, we will now have a number that we can use to extrude the each of those rectangles. There is the command extrude. And there are several ones, but we want to have this one because it extrudes a curve and serves along a vector. And that means we need a vector that's basically a um, line, a non-visible line that defines a direction. And because we have rectangles, we don't want them to go in the x or y direction, but we want them to go into the z direction. So basically up. And in this case, I what all I need to do is to use the z, like if I would put in the parameter just here, it will give me a warning or like a red sign that means that the component isn't working. And it also says me what it is. In this time, it says static con um, conversion failed from number to vector. Because in the vector, we always need a direction. And the direction we're getting, for example, if we just put in this number here through a unit z factor, and it outputs as a vector. So basically, all those numbers here, they're just put on the unit vector z, and thus we have the, the unit z as the vector that can be used to make a directional change to thing instead of just numbers. So we will put the base in from the curves we had in the beginning, like here. And now we have our rectangles which are not closed, thus we need to use the um, command cap and now it closes the rectangles. In this case now they're like overlapping. Basically what it does, it just uses the geometry and just rebuilds it basically and you have another surface like this. So we need to uh, right click it and unclick preview. So then we have like now, now just one um, clean uh, extrude rectangle. And with this in mind, we can now, if you use the command points on in Rhino, we can remove or rearrange the our our curve. And as you see, it, it's closer as it gets to to each of those points. It gets like lower in a way. This is, for example, particularly great if you're working in an urbanistic model and you're having a street and you want to have a certain distance that uh, a certain distance between your buildings and the street, thus allowing higher buildings or in need like lower buildings without any kind of um, recalculation 
And for example, in this case, it uses like the middle point and then it basically uses this distance and extrudes this up. And if you want to have a lesser extrusion, we can also um, use the vector and just use a multiplica uh, multipli multiplicated it. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> multiplic multipl Ladies and gentlemen, I want to multi. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I want to do a multiplication and uh, this is going to do with this stuff here and we will do uh, a multiplication of the vector and what it does is right now the following uh, we have the normal vector we just hit the, at this and when we multiply it <laughs> the, the x thing then it goes up and down and yeah, and yeah, by the way, the number slider you will find inputs in the params and inputs, or you can just double click and just type in a number like 1 or 10 or 100, and it automatically gives you one. But you sometimes have to modify it by double clicking it, and then you can say if you want to have just even, uneven numbers, or just like also numbers with a certain amount of digits after it. And yeah, and this one we put in here. And now we see that there's a general decline of those things. But when we change the street, let's say it again, it also changes accordingly. Now it's not as drastic, but when you have it more drastic, you can do it more. And obviously, you can also put the maximum range a little bit higher at 5, for example. And then we can also make it a little bit more extreme. Also like uh, it always depends on the new unit you're using so in this case we are like uh, in the millimeters or well or in the we have it like what like 100 this time or like 200 so if you're using a different scale model you might have to readjust those things as well. So I hope you like this more tutorial and I will come back for more.